Food is taken very seriously in Portugal, and believe it or not, there's an official list of seven of the best Portuguese foods that you have to eat when you visit Portugal. And we're going on a challenge to try them all. Some of the dishes on this list might actually really surprise you. Oh, you can feel how buttery that crust is. That's delicious. Oh, oh, it's totally loaded. But guaranteed, if you eat everything on this list, you'll be eating some of the best Portuguese food. From the coast of Portugal teeming with seafood, to fertile soil abundant with fruits, vegetables, and livestock, there are hundreds of regional Portuguese dishes. So how did they narrow it down to just seven must-eat foods? Well, it all started with 70 Portuguese dishes. And each dish had a pretty strict criteria, needing to be invented over 50 years ago, be known throughout a variety of Portugal's regions, and be loved by the Portuguese people as part of their food heritage. The Portugal Ministry of Culture narrowed that list down to 21, and then let the public vote. Nearly 900,000 food lovers from across the country voted, creating the officially recognized Seven Wonders of Portuguese Gastronomy. Now, while lists can bring an endless array of debate, and no one will ever completely agree, one thing is certain, this is some of the best Portuguese food you don't want to miss. Hey everyone, it's Mark Weens, and welcome to Portugal. And we're beginning this tour right in the heart of Lisbon, Portugal, and we're on our way to eat a food, a delicacy really, that is loved by, I think, nearly all Portuguese. This is a restaurant that's remained, that stood through the test of time, and it's a local Tasca, and a Tasca is a local eatery, Portuguese eatery. And yeah, this place is classic. Right underneath the archway, they serve a variety of local Portuguese food, including a dish we're, we're after. So it has arrived. This is the dish we're kicking off this tour with, sardinha asada which are, I mean, grilled sardines. I've probably mentioned a few times, Portugal is known to have some of the best seafood in the world, but nothing is more prized than the sardine. Peel the skin if you want, depends. Uh, I mean, we'll see how, we'll see if it's salty or not. Sometimes they put on a lot of rock salt of the sardine, that inner bone. Let's try it first before we add some. Oh, nice. Oh. Okay. The real expert, you will show us. A little bit of olive oil. Thank you very much, okay. You can eat the skin. Oh, you can eat the skin. It's not too salty? It's okay, yeah? A little bit. Okay. But... Thank you. Okay, here we go. Let's take that filet, sardines. Mm. Sardines are truly a gem of the sea. I mean, that's delicious. A little bit salty on the skin because they salt them heavily before grilling them. Uh, but the skin, crispy. And then below the skin, I mean, it's just so juicy, so flavorful. Sardines have so much flavor. And I mean, sardines are so well loved in Portugal. That's also one of the main canned, tinned fish. Man. Next time I come to Portugal, have to come during sardine season. The specials here for the day was also the codfish fritters, deep fried codfish. Uh, I'm not sure what else is in here, but huge, big fritters. Bacalao, which is a codfish, is also extremely popular. Many uh, people will say that bacalao should, be, should have been included on the list, but it didn't make the cut. However, I know it's of huge importance in Portuguese culture. People love codfish. Mm. Okay, that's really hearty really fluffy, and then you taste that, that flavor of the, the preserved salty codfish. Would be good with some chili sauce. Let me add some of this, this pity pity chili sauce. Oh yeah. Oh, with the pity pity, that takes it to the next level. 
We also got a side of rice and beans. Mm. Oh, that's really good. It's almost like a rice and beans stew. I had come here when I was in Lisbon. It's been almost eight years ago. This is a restaurant that's right in the heart of Lisbon, right in the major touristy district, but it is down a little side, kind of almost a cove. The owner, he, he came and he remembered us from eight years ago. He wouldn't charge me for the bill. I tried to pay for our meal right now. That's so kind of him. Thank you very much. And just as highly recommended today as eight years ago. Just great, incredible, fantastic, local Portuguese food. For our next food on this list, we're gonna stop by at the market and we should be able to find it there. Here we go, we got a seat kind of at the, the entrance of the market and they had it. What we came here to eat is queijo Serra de Estrela, one of the most famous of all Portuguese cheeses. And one of the things I love about eating cheese in Portugal is that they always pair it with fruits or with jams actually. And so you eat the cheese and then you add some of the jam and so you've got that kind of contrast of salty, savory with sweet fruitiness. You can kind of scoop from the center and it should be soft enough to spread. It's oozy. Oh yes, oozy. Yes. Oh, look how soft it is. Oh, yeah. Oh, and it's a sheep milk cheese, but it's just so creamy. It doesn't have a really strong taste, but it's mild, it's creamy. You can taste the richness of it. It's so flavorful. It comes from the mountains, not that far away from Lisbon. It's just such a clean, such a sheep-driven cheese. It's so good. For our next bite of the cheese, I'm gonna do some of the cheese, and then I'll scoop some of the jam mm -hmm. as well. Okay, let's do it some of the, the cracker toast. Cheese goes on, and looks like we have a, a fig jam here as well. That combination is truly Portuguese. Mm. I think that is a fig jam. Oh, to pair with the cheese, something truly Portuguese is to pair that cheese with jam. The sweet savory combination, which is so good. Such a like snacking, addictive snacking combination. Let's try some of that ham while we're at it. Oh, oh that one melts in your mouth. I'll try some, some cheese with ham, how about that? Oh yes, oh yes, that's a good bite. Mm. Man. Because it, I mean the cheese is spreadable. It can act like a, like a, I mean perfect for bread. Actually sometimes I've seen it where it's so spreadable that it's almost like liquefying, it's almost like oozy. This one is a bit thicker. Um, but same incredible flavor. Also, I wanted to mention that a few days ago, I was with my friends Andre and Ricardo in Porto, and we went on an ultimate food tour, and we had a huge cheese tasting, but we had the full cheese experience with a variety of jams, including pumpkin jam, including a couple of chutneys, including white wine, and so I'll show you a little bit of that experience as well. Just scoop it out and spread it. Oh, that one looks very creamy. This one on its own first. Mmm. Oh. Mmm. That is so good, yeah. Mmm. So creamy. Spreadable. Complex. Flavors just keep building in your mouth. Oh, it's good. Oh, so you can just scoop it, it's so soft. Yeah. It's spreadable. Almost like butter, really. Yeah. And, and then you combine that with the jam. Look at all of that. Oh, pumpkin jam. Sorry, here it goes. <laughs> mm. <laughs> mm. 
but it goes without saying, Portugal has some incredible cheese. And to definitely, if you love cheese, you should taste the variety of cheeses, including queijo, uh, cerro de estrella. So far, things are going fantastic. I've enjoyed every moment, every bite of this food tour so far. Next up, we're eating a dish which is called caldo verde. It translates directly to a green soup, and it is a potato-based broth. I think, I believe it's collard greens, which are sliced very thinly and placed in your bowl along with some chorizo and the broth, the potato broth. So it's hearty, it's warming, it's a delicious soup, and we're going to kind of a cafeteria-style restaurant. That's one of the most popular places to eat it in Lisbon. It's a really nice place, actually, really like a cafeteria style, almost like a beer hall. But really, they specialize in the caldo verde, the green soup. Uh, but they have beer, they have sandwiches. The combination is you get a sandwich. We also got the dessert to go with it. Um, but I'm excited to try their version of caldo verde. Ooh, and that's freshly baked, too. Well, I thought it was like a sandwich, but it's actually a stuffed bread. Let's see what's on the inside. Oh, oh you can smell sausage on the inside. Oh, oh, it's totally loaded. Oh, loaded with chorizo, I think. Okay, we'll come back for this, but this is the combination. You eat it together with this bread with chorizo and then the caldo verde. Oh, so there are some pieces of chorizo in here. Mmm, mmm. Oh, got a little soup on my chin, but that's really good, really warming and hearty. It's comfort food. I mean, the soup itself is really thick from the potato, like pureed potato almost. Then you've got the, the collard greens, which are really finely shredded. And even if you go to the market, you can see where they finely shredded collard greens like this, which is for the caldo verde. And then oftentimes the, the collard greens should not be overcooked so that you really taste the greenness of it and also the crunch and the freshness of the collard greens. And then the chorizo gives it that flavor, the saltiness. So all of that together uh, is so warming, so flavorful. Oh, I love a good Portuguese called over today. Let's try the bread that it comes with, specifically at this place. Mm. Oop. Oop. I dropped a piece of chorizo. Oh, oh, that's really good. It's like bread, freshly baked, you can tell. I mean, they have a whole oven back there. Uh, it looks like it's burning wood, um, but the bread is great filled with chorizo on the inside that again provides it flavor. It's time, the dip must be done. Mm. Perfect. And what's amazing about the soup is that you add just a, sli a few slices of chorizo in there and it provides so much flavor for your whole bowl of soup. And then additionally, yeah, I was in Porto a few days ago with my friends, and when we were eating one of the sandwiches, one of the famous pork sandwiches in Porto, they're also, they also specialize in caldo verde. And so I had a chance to watch them as they prepared the bowl. Yes. Okay. Oh, so the kale goes in raw. Nice. And then the broth, the potato, potato broth. Okay, very nice. Okay, obrigado. It's okay to try the yeah, soup. Go for it. So it's a potato broth, but the kale is kept separately, and then it's raw actually when the soup goes in, just wilted from the hotness of the, the potato broth. Mm. This is my first time to try Portuguese caldo verde. Oh, that's delicious. Oh, the thickness of the potato broth, the crunch of the kale, and the kale is not overpowering, it's not too green tasting has a nice crunch to it. It's really like hearty and warming. Mm. And you've just got a little bit of the flavor from the chorizo in there. Instead of adding salt into the soup, just add mm -hmm. some chorizo in and you're that, covered. That takes care of it. The chorizo, it's so tender, totally melts in your mouth. You taste the fattiness, the crumbliness of it. That complexity of flavor, which just one slice and yet it powers the entire bowl. Imagine. Mm. Mm. That's one of the great, uh, I mean, soup and sandwich Portuguese style combinations. And now we know why it's so good. Even comes with two drinks, this water, a beer and a coffee. I mean, 
apart from the Caldo Verde, I like this place. It's just laid back, self-service pretty much, uh, cafeteria style. And you can get a whole meal tray all together with a beer drink, with a, with a coffee to end your meal. Let's move on to the next food. Welcome to the beautiful city of Porto. This is an old school place. I would say that this is one of the crown jewels of the city. Solar Moinho do Vento is all about traditional Portuguese gastronomy. Oh, that's really good. Whoa, that just squeezed out. It looks like there's a lot going on inside of that. What is it called? Alheira. Alheira. The base of it, bread and lots of garlic. Slow cook the bread, garlic, and then you add the meats. Ideally, um, game meat. Rabbit, duck, quail, oh. air, um, and then some spices just to bring it all together. A lot of fat in as well. Usually pork fat is used into this. And here, they just put it in the oven and let it cook. You just puncture the thing and you know that it's cooked when it just starts coming out open. Starts to pop in. Yep. So it's kind of like a everything in one sausage. Wow, it's so hearty and bready and meaty all at the same time. You see also that the skin is just so crispy as well. Oh. Check out the flavors on that, huh? Wow. Yeah, flavors and textures. It's like gooey dough plus pork. <laughs> I've never had a sausage like that before, ever. Yeah, it's stretching the Something boundaries. Totally. Yeah, that is stretching the boundaries. That's taking the sausage to, to new heights. Wow, that's heavy, warming, and absolutely delicious. What a, what a top meal. And we're moving on to the next meal. Welcome to the small town of Meliada. And we're about halfway between Porto and Lisbon, but this is Portugal's capital of Leitao, which is the Portuguese style of roast suckling pig, which is one of the seven best Portuguese foods that you have to try. And this one, this is a big one. I mean, this is one of the ultimate of the entire list. Okay, here we go. So it is served my first time to ever eat Portuguese style leitao, the roast suckling pig. Let's try it out. Look at that skin. Mm. Oh. All the crispiness of the skin just totally is like a cracker that just collapses and like it's crispy but it's not sharp oh man just crackles on your tongue as you take a bite and then you've got that the inside of the suckling pig which is a young pig a piglet um it has that milky really creamy interior as for seasoning i'm not totally sure what's all in there but you taste a little bit of garlic salt i think black pepper mm. well that's Really extraordinarily tasty though. You taste the fire, just the flame in that pork. That skin though is unbelievable. Mm. Mm. As he opened up the pig and cut it, cut it apart, I could see this liquid on the inside of the, the crevice of the belly. And now I taste a little bit of that. You really taste the black pepper in there. Garlic, salt, but the texture of that, the flavor of that is incredible. That's why they call Le Tao, the one of the ultimate dishes of Portuguese cuisine, one of the most loved dishes, and definitely one of the top seven Portuguese foods of all time. Okay, next up I'll try some of the, the gravy. Drizzle it on. Oh, look at the way it's juicy. Can you see how juicy it is inside of there? And can you see that juiciness? Oh, the juiciness, and just the way it's, look, I mean, knives are only, only a tool for getting it to your mouth. It's not for chopping anything just totally, totally separates. Mm. Oh yeah, that sauce is great. Add some moistness, taste the pepper in there. Oh man, okay, and then some of the skin. Wow. 
Wow. That is incredible. One of the greatest suckling pigs I've ever had, no doubt. Okay, and then move into that skin. Oh, that skin. Wow. I mean, the contrast of that creamy meat to the crispy skin is incredible. You can grab a slice of orange. The pig is so rich. Um, when you're feeling a little riched out, you can mm, have some orange to kind of cleanse the palate and, and like deglaze your mouth. And we got a salad here. Oh yes, salad will be fantastic to go with this meal. Oh yeah, great salad. Lettuce, looks like there's some olive oil on the bottom, onions, red cabbage, carrots, fantastic. Mmm. Mmm. Oh, it's a really good salad. Okay, and then we got some chips as well. <coughs> oh yeah, chips are fantastic. Very crispy, salty. Got some more of that gravy. And definitely, I mean, when they give you a, a plate, they, they mix and match some different parts of the pig. So you get a selection of everything. Every part tastes different, has a different texture to it. And that sauce, really incredibly flavorful, but quite salty, so don't overdo it on the sauce. What an incredible suckling pig. Portugal is very famous for seafood and they have some of the greatest seafood coasts on earth. But now I'm in Algarve, which is the very southernmost portion or region of Portugal. And of course, they're very famous for their seafood and especially a few dishes with seafood and rice. So the main dish that we came here to eat and that we're featuring, and that's one of the seven must-eat Portuguese foods, is arroz de marisco, which is rice with a mixture of seafood and usually shellfish. But couldn't resist some of these prawns first. Uh, beautiful prawns in oil, garlic, chili. There's some lemon. Oh, that smells, comes like boiling hot on your table. It smells so good. And you can want in some oysters. So we got some oysters. Squeeze this lemon. just to get the, the taste buds flowing before the seafood rice comes. Mm. Mm. Oh yeah, that's tasty. A little bit of a pita pita chili oil flavor to it, infused with garlic. And really love that, that squeeze of lemon juice to brighten it up. <laughs> Thank you very much. Obrigado. Okay, fully bibbed, ready to go. It's gonna be serious. There it is. Wow. Obrigado. Love how they serve it. They cook it and they serve it in this copper pot. I think it's a copper or brass pot. Um, and here it is. Arroz de marisco. One of the great Portuguese seafood dishes, an all-in-one with rice, with herbs, shellfish. There's razor clams, there's clams, there's shrimp. Oh, there's uh, langoustines in here. It looks spectacular. And I love the presentation. It's a grand family dish. Oh, let's go do a big scoop. Oh, want to find a few clams as well. Langostines right on top. There we go. Yes. Oh, I'm overflowing. Before digging into the seafood, let's let's just first start with that rice. All right, let's try it. Mm. Oh man, that broth, all of the flavor from the shells and the seafood. You taste a little flavor of the coriander in there. I think, I think as they finished, they probably loaded it with a, a sprinkle of coriander, which brings out the freshness. And then you taste all that rich seafood. And the rice is cooked so it's not mushy, has a little chewiness to it. Um, and it also stays hot throughout your entire meal as that, that copper pot just stays hot. Mm. Oh man, that's so good. That's delicious. Oh man, the sweetness of the seafood. Let's try some of these clams down here.
I think the clams are one of the main highlight ingredients that are providing so much flavor to the stew. Try the, the langoustine. All that flavor from the head, and one of the great things about cooking this way, soup, broth, stew, is that it just absorbs all of those juices, so it's so juicy. I mean, when you when you suck the heads of the seafood, you have all of that. Now you know why we needed an apron? Yes, it's a juicy dish. That's without a doubt. You're gonna get some splatter. But yeah, the juices, I mean, that's the highlight of a Portuguese arroz de marisco. Let's try some of that lobster in there. Oh, you can see the roe in that lobster. I think actually my, maybe the best way to eat it would just be to empty it out into the rice. Once you empty it out into your rice, then you can scoop it in with the rice, get all the broth and juices. I think that's the highlight. Mm. Mm. Yeah, I think that's the best way to eat it. Empty it all out, then you eat it with the spoon. Get all that burst of flavor from the broth and the rice. Mm. Look at the size of the shrimp. Should we pop open the shrimp? Whoa. Give myself another scoop. Season with a little pepper. Oh, a little pity pity would be nice too. I think probably my favorite thing of the entire pot, not the seafood, it's the rice that's absorbed all of the flavor of the seafood. That's just totally the highlight. We also got a tomato salad. Mm. Very good. Oh, that was excellent. So warming, so hearty. One of the greatest ways to enjoy a medley, a mix of seafood. Next up on this Portuguese food tour, we're back in Lisbon. And you could not have a Portuguese food tour without the final thing on this list, which is Portuguese egg tarts, also known as pastéis de nata, or for one, a pastel de nata. And actually, the last time I was in Portugal, eight years ago, we went to Belém. Belém is uh, not too far away from, from uh, Lisbon, and we took a day trip there to the original place uh, to eat pastéis de Belém and that's the original place where they invented the Portuguese egg tarts. Which one is the original one? Mm -hmm. The first one. The, the best one. <laughs> the Southern Nazis imitation of this one. Thank you. Right. One tart, one uh, chocolate donut, and yes. a cappuccino and two coffees. Right? Our first stop this morning is the legendary Pastes de Belém, which is maybe one of the most well-known places in all of Portugal or maybe in the entire world for Portuguese egg tarts. And Portuguese egg tarts are famous the world over from Macau to even in Thailand. Do they have it on, do they have it on KFC in Thailand? I think, yes, yes. I think they, yeah, they also have it at KFC in Thailand. Uh, but Portuguese egg tarts, we're about to have our first one so far in Lisbon and a cup of coffee. Uh, they have both takeaway and sit in, and luckily we are here early enough where we just got a table and about to sample this world famous egg tart. Thank you. One, two. <laughs> Thank you. This one, cinnamon and sugar. Drop on the pastel de Belém has arrived. Ying and I got one, and then we also got a chocolate-filled Portuguese donut. And then I knew one coffee would not be enough, so I went ahead and ordered two at the same time. I better begin with the egg tart. And by the way, this place dates back to 1837. And before I take a bite, I just want to point out that flaky, crispy crust on the edges here. Looks like little layers of pastry. And then it has a slightly yellow, golden, and slightly browned top little crust on that egg tart. That is 
the best egg tart I've had. What's really awesome about that egg tart is actually the crust, the outer wrapping, which is incredibly crispy. And then it has a salty flavor to it as well, which contrasts the, the pudding-like egg tart in the center, which is sweet. Okay, let me follow that with a sip of coffee. Good combination. Yeah, that combination of the crispy crust with the warm, gooey, pudding-like interior is a, yeah, that's a, that is a pear. But now we're here in Lisbon, and many people say that this place right here, which is called Mantigaria, which actually translates to buttery, serves some of the best egg tarts in the world. So here we are, and what's really cool about this place is you can see the entire process of them making the pastel de nata with the dough, rolling out the dough, starting with the dough. Uh, then they mold it into these little cups, and then it bakes, and then he squeezes in the egg custard, and then it bakes again until it's completely golden brown on the top, bubbly, and has a little, I mean, caramelization, as well as some beautiful marbling of charred egg and butter and sugar on top. And here we are. I mean, many people say this is the best place to eat pastel de nata, I mean, in Portugal, in Lisbon, in the world. Actually, I got it to go, because there's only a standing space. It's not a, not a big place, but this place is just standing space. Uh, so I got it packed in a little box. Oh, it comes, oh, a double, a double. Okay, ready? Oh, you can feel how buttery that crust is. Oh, it perfectly preserves the pastéis de nata on the inside. And I love that, that crust on the top is beautiful. Oh, oh, the custard, the sweetness. Oh, that bottom crust is unbelievable. It's so buttery and flaky, and yet it has a little bit of a chewiness as well. Mmm. Oh, the bottom crust is, that might be the highlight here. People would immediately actually sprinkle, oh, oops. Sprinkle on a little cinnamon. Well, that comes out like a little poof. Don't breathe in too hard. I'll hold my breath as I take my first bite. Oh. oh, even while holding my breath, I got a little dust of cinnamon. Oh, okay, the cinnamon is great. Yeah, the cinnamon provides a nice fragrance um, and kind of contrasts the, the sweetness of the custard, the richness of the custard, but I'm all about that base here. Man, that base is so buttery. And just in case you were wondering, mantegaria, mantegaria actually means buttery. That's why it's so buttery. Oh, cheers. What an incredible Portuguese food tour it's been. Mm. And what a sweet finish. Oh, that pastel de nata, it was definitely delicious. Uh, really, I like it with that, sp that sprinkle of cinnamon. That gives it a nice depth of flavor, the butteriness of that flaky pastry on the bottom. That was the highlight for me. But definitely, also, if you have a time to take a day trip to Belém, highly recommend it as well. And that place just has so much character. It's just such a such an icon, such a, such a legendary place. Uh, but either way, you can't go wrong. What an incredible food tour it's been, eating some of the best Portuguese food. I mean, voted on by the public, by Portuguese people, on the seven, seven best Portuguese foods. And you know, I mean, it's a list, and so there's always some controversy. And I mean, I think a list always brings up a debate, but that's only what makes it more fun, is to be able to debate all the varieties and all of the different dishes that Portugal is so famous for. So this just gives you a little bit of an idea of what you should try and what you should eat, even though there's still so much more to discover, so many more foods to try when you're in Portugal. I'll have all the information in the description box below, everything we ate, and I wanna say a huge thank you to you for watching this video. Please remember to give it a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. Leave a comment below, I'd love to hear from you. And if you haven't watched all the other videos in this uh, Portuguese food tour, we had some incredible food in Porto, and then we went on an ultimate piri piri chicken tour, 
across the country. So stay tuned for more Portuguese food and don't miss out on it. Thanks again for watching. Goodbye from Lisbon, and I will see you on the next video.